texts from self-translated queer consciousness, delayed intellectual traffic, and the constitution of the digital subject, French Anglo queer theory. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Technology Philosophy. This episode is a listing of the authors and texts referenced in another episode about the Translating Queerly workshop held at King's College London on September 28, 2013, where the key organizers and speakers were Maxime Serval, Hector Collius, Oliver Davis, and Nick Reese Roberts. Texts are discussed in the uh, roughly in temporal order. Some of the cornerstone reference thinkers for gay theory include Foucault and his History of Sexuality, published in 1976, deconstructionists like Derrida and Sisu, Judith Butler with Gender Trouble, published in English in 1990 and not available in French until 2005, Eve Sedgwick's Epistemology of the Closet, published in 1990, work from Monique Vitigue and Christine Delphi, and Jasper Poir's 2007 Terrorist Assemblages, Homo Nationalism in Queer Times, linking sexuality, race, and gender to forces of securitization, counterterrorism, and nationalism. Jean Genet and Derek Jarman are two important filmmakers among many in the queer movement. In the 1970s, early work in queer theory commences with Guy Hockenham's Homosexual Desire, published in 1972 in French and in 1978 in English, linking homosexuality with French leftist theory and politics. He draws on Deleuze and Guattari's theories of desiring production to further criticize psychoanalysis uh, from Lacan and Freud and addresses the relation of capitalism to sexualities, the dynamics of desire and the political effects of gay group identities. British historian and gay rights activist Jer Jeffrey Weeks further discusses Akinem's theories of subjectivity and desire in his 1978 preface to the English version of the book. Jeffrey Weeks has other interesting publications, including a 1982 paper, Foucault for Historians, regarding the uses and abuses of Foucault in critical theory debates. Raymond Williams develops the concept cultural materialism in Literary Theory and Cultural Studies in a series of books starting with Culture and Society in 1958 about the relationship between society and culture where culture is always political and the result of forces of production. In the 1990s, David Halperin, known for his 2012 book, How to Be Gay, published Saint Foucault in 1997 as an important foundation of queer theory countering James Miller's salacious 1993 biography of Foucault called The Passion of Michel Foucault. Another helpful book is Questions of Cultural Identity, edited by Stuart Hall and Paul Duguay, published in 1996, providing a contextualization of the concept of cultural identity, how questions of culture become charged questions of identity. In 1996, American theorist Leo Bersani's Homos, Homos, Rethinking Identity, was published looking at homosexuality in modern culture and suggesting that same-sex desire by its very nature can disrupt oppressive social orders. The well-known sexual dissidence program at the University of Sussex was started by Alan Sinfield and Jonathan Dollimore. Ellen Sinfield's Fault Lines, Cultural Materialism and the Politics of Dissident Reading in 1992 is an example of cultural materialism at work where Sinfield sees disruptions in concepts of hierarchy, nationality, gender, and sexuality forcing their way into literary texts. Similarly, Jonathan Dollimore's 1991 book, Sexual Dissidents, links sexual and gender dissidents to debates on literary theory, psychoanalysis, and cultural materialism. Now in the 2000s, an important text is Didier Erebon's Insult and the Making of the Gay Self, published in 1999 in French and in 2004 in English, translated by UC Berkeley's Michael Lucy. Erebon sees French gay studies and gay male politics 
social life and culture as transformative responses to an oppressive social order. He looks to Foucault, Weil, Gide, and Proust as being helpful in the project of creating spaces in which to resist subjection and reformulate oneself. As technology philosophers, we might notice that digital art, technology, and biotechnology are possibly the ultimate space for resisting subjection and reformulating the self, given appropriate safeguards. Another book is Queer French by American French professor Dennis Provencher, published in 2007, looking at tensions between Anglo-American and French articulations of homosexuality, where features include French resistance to globalization and Americanization, and sexual citizenship influenced by contemporary French popular culture. A French queer theorist, Marie-Hélène Boursier, has the third volume of her Queer Zones trilogy published in 2011. The book examines the construction of the queer in France and how to draw on political creativity to counter current setbacks in minority par participation in government, using one's sexual orientation to overcome a political sexual disorientation. Lee Edelman's 2004 book, No Future, Queer Theory, and the Death Drive, was also mentioned, and a 2009 issue of the Australian journal Borderlands called uh, Jacques Rancière on the Shores of Queer Theory, which links Ranciérian and queer theory thought. This brief summary of some of the key texts in queer theory most referenced at the Translating Queerly workshop held at King's College London in September 2013. Texts by Maxime Servol, Hector Collius, Oliver Davis, and Nick Rees Roberts. Thought cornerstones Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida, Helen Hélène Zizou, Judith Butler, Eve Sedgwick, Monique Vatigue, Christine Delphi, and Jasper Pouar. Filmmakers Jean Genet and Derek Jarman. By era from the 1970s is Guy Ockenham, Jeffrey Weeks, and Raymond Williams. From the 1990s, David Halperin, Stuart Hall, Leo Bersani, Ellen Sinfield, and Jonathan Dollimore. And from the 2000s, Didier Erebon, Dennis Provencher, Marie-Hélène Boursier, and Lee Edelman. The details of the workshop content are discussed in another episode, Self-Translated Queer Consciousness, Delayed Intellectual Traffic, and the Constitution of the Digital Subject, French Anglo-Queer Theory. Thank you. Please join me for another episode of Technology Philosophy.